Welcome to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast, where you will learn how to identify, evaluate, negotiate, perform due diligence on, finance, turn around and operate mobile home parks. And now, here is your host, the fifth largest mobile home park owner in the United States, Frank Rolf. In 1982, John Naisbitt wrote the book, Megatreads. It was a huge bestseller. I remember the book well. I had just gotten out of Stanford University with a degree in economics and started my billboard company. And the book had lots of really good ideas. It was the first book, as I recall, that really showed what they thought might happen in the world at large, in America in particular, and how those megatrends would shape the future for decades to come. But you know, 1982 was about 40 years ago, and I haven't seen any updates on the book. So I thought here on the Mobile Home Park Mastery podcast, we'd review what I consider to be some of the new megatrends and how those may impact the mobile home park industry. Number one megatrend, the demand for affordable housing. It wasn't really as true back in 82 when Naismith wrote his book, because back then Americans were basically a lot richer than they are today statistically. However, what's happened is, as we all know, you've got 10,000 baby boomers retiring per day, That was an item noted in his book that creates a lot more demand for affordable housing from people who are going to retire. And the amount they're retiring into is pretty much exactly as described in his book. They're getting just enough to get by, about $1,200 a month per person in retirement. Hardly any pensions these days or other things to fall back on. Also, what she would not know when he wrote the book is that half of all the jobs created in America since the Great Recession have been paying $10 an hour or less. So as a result, we've become a nation of people who don't earn much money, a nation of people who did earn money who have now become retired. And so that makes the demand for affordable housing strong. And it will always remain strong. So I think we all agree that that megatrend is pretty much correct. Number two megatrend, which has only become very obvious during COVID-19, is what Zillow is now calling the great reshuffling. That's the movement from urban markets to suburban and exurban. Now, what's an exurban market? Well, that is the ring of residential areas of beyond the suburbs. You can still commute from them to the city, but instead of the typical suburban 30-minute commute, it's often about an hour commute to exurbia. I live in exurbia. I'm about an hour away from St. Louis. Half of everyone in my small town works in St. Louis. It's not that hard to get conditioned to drive an hour each way per day. And I think a lot of Americans going forward are going to find that the quality of life, in those exurbia markets is so high, they're willing to drive a little farther for it. So I think we're going to see the reshuffling going on for a long, long time. And that was not something in Aisbitt's book. Back in 82, a lot of people were starting to get fascinated again with the idea of moving into the urban market, the urban core. So I think that's a new mega trend that was not described in the book. I also think you're going to have a little of that mega trend continuing on with self driving vehicles. Let's think about that for a moment. So in the car of the future, you program where you want to go and you push go and it drives while you simply sit around what looks like a booth in the back seat. And in that booth, you can watch movies on your computer. You can write reports on your computer. You can look at anything you want on your iPad, anything you want to do to entertain yourself, play video games. It's all right there. It's kind of your own personal reflection pod. So what's going to happen is people are going to start liking that because one of the worst parts about commuting is having to stare out the front windshield and hit the brake and the gas pedal and steer the car. When you take those out of the equation, is it really that much unfun to travel an hour? And I would say the answer is probably not. So I think that the self-driving vehicles, which are coming to market faster than anyone ever foresaw, are going to definitely change the appetite for suburbia and exurbia. And of course, the good news on that is most mobile home parks are in suburbia and exurbia. There's not many mobile home parks in urban greater metro areas. There are a few. They're typically very, very dense. They typically have kind of sketchy locations. But uh, the meat and potatoes of our industry is to be found in suburbia and exurbia. And since those remain the hot spot of the megatrends of the future, feeling very, very good about those. Another thing to think about in addition, which is kind of a subset of exurbia and suburbia, will be the expansion potentially of the United States metro areas. Now, as Americans perhaps start to live farther out, I imagine at some point it will be reflected in those metro maps. Now, I know the metro maps, in my own opinion, are 
often chock full of corruption. I think people do all kinds of things with those trying to force metro labels on towns that maybe don't deserve it because they're hoping that will bring us some kind of a social or governmental economic program. However, I do think as people push farther out and get out of those urban markets, those urban metros, therefore the metros will expand. And that's great if you own a mobile home park and what is just outside today's metro and later gets gobbled up into it. We have a couple of mobile home parks in Anderson, Indiana that did just that. We went to bed one night and the metro population of Anderson, Indiana was 100,000. And when we woke up the next day, it was almost 2 million. How did that happen? Well, they decided that Anderson was part of Indianapolis. I guess to some, as an exurbia market, it would be. So I think you'll see also some stretching of the metro markets, which again will be great for mobile home park owners. The next mega trend, which everyone sees and everyone knows, but no one likes to talk about it because it's just too painful is the complete collapse of the retail, lodging, and office sectors of American real estate. They're huge. They're vast. There's billions, if not trillions, of dollars of debt involved. But let's all admit they're pretty hopeless at this point. And it wasn't just COVID-19. COVID-19 was the final nail in the coffin, where for the longest time, we've all started shopping online. We've all started officing from home. We've all realized we no longer have to travel in business, but we can just FaceTime and Zoom people and spare ourselves the unpleasantness of driving and staying in a hotel. And don't forget that, at least in my opinion, and I think everyone listening would say, you know, it wasn't that much fun to do air travel even before COVID-19. There was no service. Nobody cared anymore. Flying from point A to point B became one of the most miserable things you could imagine. As a result, as retail, lodging, and office, as, as real estate sectors basically die, as they basically reshuffle, there'll be some survivors, but there'll be a whole lot of failures. They estimate that at least a quarter of all suburban malls will close over the next five to 10 years. It's going to force a lot of people in those groups to find some other thing to invest in, either the investors in those three sectors or those who work in those three sectors will basically become homeless as far as that sector. They can't buy any more of it. They don't want to own any more of it. And they'll look for new things to invest in. And that, of course, will lead many of them into the mobile home park industry. I've been writing articles on that for years now. Never even knew COVID-19 was on the menu. But certainly, I was correct at this point because as those sectors are now declining, we have more and more interest from private equity groups and others to invest in the mobile home park space. And again, that's going to be great for those who own mobile home parks and really great for the industry because I see the industry then becoming more mainstream. There won't be that many sectors left after those collapse, right? The whole real estate sector of America will be all about housing, single family, multifamily, and then let's also stick mobile home parks in there because in fact, we do house 8% of the entire US population. Next mega trend is you're not going to see any help from the government and don't get misled on this. I know you can see articles out there from groups that want you to believe that in the future, American government is going to mandate more mobile home parks to be built and relax uniform building codes, allowing mobile homes to go even on residential lots. I don't see either ever occurring. I think what you're seeing right now, even with COVID-19, is the fact that states and local municipal officials still have a lot of rights and power. Federal government can make suggestions. They can sometimes give aid in the event of crisis, but for the most part, this is more of a local and state phenomenon, and I just don't see it happening. If you can show me one state official, local official who champions the concept of changing the zoning to allow for mobile home parks, then I would appreciate seeing it because I don't know any, and I follow almost everything there is in the media. However, I think we'll still see Fannie and Freddie Mac stepping up to the plate, producing loans for the mobile home park industry. Why? Because our loans are great. We have the lowest default rate in the U.S. on loans. I say that because I will assume that self-storage will collapse this year under the weight of COVID-19 and their own issues. So as a result, since we will be the heir apparent to the lowest default rate in American real estate crown, I assume we'll be getting more and more loans. I think the program is great for everyone. It's great for the American public. Fannie Mae Freddie Mac injects very important capital back into the industry when they give those loans, allowing people to make lots of improvements. And I think it even raises the bar of parks because Fannie Mae Freddie Mac is a little more selective in the parks they'll finance. And it forces pretty much all park owners to try a little harder to make that all happen. So I think really the government is not going to really do a whole lot to help the industry, but they've already done the most important piece. And that's Fannie Mae Freddie Mac financing of the mobile home parks. Beyond that, this whole myth that they're going to allow new parks to be built, it's just that it's a myth. 
It's brought on by manufacturers mostly trying to push their stocks to say, oh, don't worry, at some point we'll be able to ship and manufacture tons of more homes. I just don't see it happening. I was there in the heyday. If you'll recall back in the 90s, we had a moment in American history where manufacturers were producing about 400,000 units a year. Today, they're doing a little under 100,000. I don't really see that number changing. Finally, the final mega trend that I will throw out that I think we're seeing right now, and it was really quite terrifying to just about everyone but mobile home park owners, is the return of stagflation. You saw it in the news just this week. People started bringing out the term, which is so terrifying to America. We suffered through horrible stagflation back in the 70s under Jimmy Carter. Ronald Reagan stepped in and saved the day, perhaps, although we don't know really if he did it but certainly it did get cured while he was president. Stagflation basically refers to the concept of rising inflation, but a lousy economy. It's always been assumed that the healthiest world is one where you have a healthy economy and the healthy economy creates inflation. But you can also have bad economy, high inflation as they had in the 70s. The term was brought out by a guy named Ian McLeod over in Britain, because the whole world suffered from stagflation back in the era. The term was first used in a speech in 1970, and it proved that McLeod was a very good estimator of the future of the economy because he was absolutely spot on as to what was about to befall the world in general. You know, as an economics major at Stanford, I learned that everything in the world runs in cycles. Never think, oh yeah, well, that's never coming back. It always comes back. And unfortunately, I think for America, stagflation probably will return at some point. I think we can see that right now in our monetary theory. We're printing tons and tons of money. That's one of the key parts you have of stagflation. Then you have to have an interruption in raw goods, which causes raw good pricing to increase. Of course, that's called COVID-19. You add the two together and you can end up with stagflation. The good news is it's probably a fine thing for mobile home park owners once again. It leads to inflation, which leads to increasing values of mobile home parks. Remember that your debt remains constant while the value of the asset increases during inflation. So inflation actually is considered a positive for the real estate industry. But it will only be a positive for our industry in particular because the bad economy portion is going to really, really hurt the other real estate sectors that normally survived and prospered during the 70s stagflation epidemic. This time, we're going to be producing a nation of poor people who just really need more and more affordable housing. We'll be one of the few superstars of stagflation. Personally, I hope it doesn't happen because it's a precursor to all kinds of terrible things in the world, in the world economy. But at least I feel happy that a mobile home park is probably the best protector to the downside of that effect. This is Frank Roth, the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast Series. Hope you enjoyed this. Talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. Be sure to visit us at mhpmastery.com to subscribe to the show, read our show transcriptions, and access all of our great information on mobile home park investing. 